Um, looking at the emails, it looks like there was a period when the MX records were messed up. Did anybody see then my email where I sent out about the the doodle? Uh, I did not see such an email. I was wondering why nobody chimed in. And then I guess some days later. People say, Are you trying to find another time for this meeting? Because please. Well, it's this, the same thing. Uh, let me just because I, I looked back at the doodle because again I was like why hasn't why didn't it ever get changed um because it looked like there was Thursdays at I mean I'm in the eastern time but still Thursdays 12 p.m and 1 p.m eastern were better were like the most chosen day times which would be 9 and 10 pacific and still pretty decent for like six to seven uh European uh, Central European. Aiden, you're on um, GMT plus four. I need a... Zero right now, I think. Uh, I'm in London. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Not GMT plus four. Plus zero. Yeah, because of daylight savings. So I don't remember. I'd have to I'd have to go back and figure out exactly why what stopped us last time from this, but if you want to move forward with that, I'd be more than happy to change that time. I'd, I'd come every week. <laughs> I actually have to leave early this week to go do school pickup, so. Yeah, that, that's the, the funny part is that I literally just rushed to make an early dinner. I'm going to have this, and then I have to like immediately run the kids to different things. Um, yeah. So y'all get to see me drinking before the party, so. Um, and the problem with the last time when we tried to reschedule is we were trying to find a, a place for international uh, folks to be able to, to get yeah. connected. So that was the challenge. And then I think we landed, we were going to do an alternating. Um, and if we were doing alternating, did we need to change this one or just you know, find one for the uh, international folks? The I think there was also has, has been kind of difficult. Um, it almost seems like we just have to have like periodic bridge connections for, for folks in Asia, you know, APAC. Yeah, it was also unclear, I think, before who would lead the APAC focused meetings. If there is someone here who is interested in doing that, then that unblocks the issue. But I think that was, I think I remember that being the issue before was we would like to split into two things, maybe, but who's going to lead the other one? And then maybe that, maybe that shouldn't have blocked us and we should have just gone to Thursdays at one or whatever time it's been said with that and then figure the other thing out. I don't know. We could also have OCI East and OCI West. What's the worst thing? <laughs> <laughs> All we'll get jerseys. We'll get shirts. Yeah, I was going to say, we need color coding for that. <laughs> He's the East versus West, the red versus the blues. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll play dodgeball. <laughs> What is going on with Josh? He's in a circle. <laughs> He's always got I'm something the browser. I'm using the browser and they don't form to your body, so. It's pretty cute, though. Idea. Are you looking at the pattern? I can actually do a heart shape. I was about to say, you need like a, a little sun glint on your, you know. <laughs> it's good. You could wear your hot dog outfit and then it would kind of blend in to fill the circle. Yeah, I'm going to bring that seat to Seattle. <laughs> oh. I, so then, I'll, then I'll, I'll, I'll wear the honorary meat pant tights while, while, while I'm on the call. Then. <sighs> that terrible OCI <laughs> dinner that I surprised everybody at in LA so many years ago. All right, who's got the agenda? Uh, I'm the first item on the agenda. I actually only have about 10 minutes before I need to leave, so I will be quick. Uh, back in April, there was a call for more maintainers on image spec. I think there was also a call for distribution spec maintainers, but I don't think that that was as nearly as, uh, as uh, urgent an issue. Uh, I went back and wanted to see if we'd made any progress on that. We, we made a little bit. Uh, we swapped John in for someone else. 
we dropped a person and we updated some email addresses, which is nice hygiene, but ultimately not doing a lot. Um, I wonder, and I wanted to ask folks in this room and other anywhere else, uh, if we think that is a sufficient change in movement to call that issue closed. I think Chris closed the issue after that comment, because I think he interpreted it as, oh, that sounds like we're done and then closed it. But mm -hmm. I wanted to see if if folks think the uh, the underlying inciting issue for that uh, issue is actually resolved or if we need to keep moving forward on that. Uh, my personal opinion is that it breathed some life and attention into the topic and people are more people are already involved than before. And um, I wasn't real excited about the process in, in the first place of just kind of like grab bagging a bunch of people. I understand like that there's a need and a time and I'm glad that the charter is set up in such a way that we can, you know, like were there nobody on the group that was entirely active or interested in being active ever again, that there's process and means to to completely re-kickstart it. Um, but I think that there is work to be done in that spec, even if it is kind of like doing some reconcile of like things that we wanted to get into the image spec that really belong in kind of a generic place or distribution spec. There, there's work to be done there. There's conversations being had now that are, weren't being had before. Uh, and I think there's a tension there that more the you know any new maintainers would arise from those conversations and effectively appear you know appear and be nominated in the normal kind of processes so i, I feel like this current issue could be closed and that's just my opinion okay so um if i could summarize that the uh you're saying that the renewed exciting interest in folks is the catalyst the catalyst for future new image spec maintainers to be minted in the normal process of you know contributing and getting things merged and cleanups and maintenance and then becoming image spec maintainers and that will be the long-term solution the short-term solution that leads to it is for people to have to be more interested and engaged and that is working as a result of that issue is that more or less i don't know if that cleared it up or made it worse but uh, working or rekindled yeah yeah um does anyone else, I, I don't want to, uh, does anyone else have any thoughts on that? Okay. Yeah, I had, Go ahead, uh, I'll add one quick thing that, you know, out of that came some suggestions and PRs and some went through to completion and some like never got finished. So that that's the only part that feels a little weird is like we, uh, I think we either need to figure out why the current maintainers didn't vote yay or nay on those or whether we just want to table that. I mean, I'm definitely okay with the way Vincent put it. I just, we still have these suggested add and removes and they never got done. Yeah, I think I think in particular, there's there's a couple of suggested new additions that are approved by enough people that if the rest of the people weren't maintainers, they would be unanimously accepted. Like Tycho, for instance, was it is accepted by four. I think, I'm not looking at it right now, but four of the seven and the other three haven't been active since I've paid attention to this community since the beginning of the year. So if the issue is is inactive maintainers, then I think it's fundamentally impossible to block on the inactive maintainers approval to fix the issue. Right. Or or like if you're saying this, this is sufficient, this is enough. And we just say, like, we're, we're taking those uh, no votes as no or non votes as no's, then these are no's and reject. But I think you're right. Sitting sitting with open proposals is sort of a weird state to be in. I don't know, Steve, do, uh, Steve has his hand up. Yeah, I, just, I mean, this was the problem with this. There's this wasn't as simple as there's a gap in maintainers. There's some questions we're trying to figure out in the broader scope of what do we do, what do we think about what the various projects 
it was some very tactical things like your PR on the um, um, base image thing. I forgot what the exact property name is, but that mm -hmm. was a fairly focused one that there was general consensus. It was just wording. So there was activity to get that merged. There's this larger conversation around how do we make the next evolutions, whether it be the image spec runtime stuff or the stuff we're talking about with artifacts, that there's, it's not as simple as just some maintainers on particular projects. That's, so that's where I think a couple of the PRs are sitting is mm -hmm. there needs to be a larger thought process put together. And while the focus on trying to revive some maintainers was a tactical effort, I don't think it really solved the larger problem, which is what I think you're asking about. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned the the base image annotations. I, I I don't consider that. I mean, it merged, and I'm happy that it did. But I don't consider that a a an example of a well running machine. It took six months and a lot of hair pulling and a lot of uh, uh, cat herding. To uh, you know, it's a, it's open source. There's going to be some cat herding, but this is it was quite a lot of it and quite a lot of asking, begging, cajoling for approval. Uh, but, well, but I'm also new, of, so I don't know if that's normal. It, I wouldn't say it's normal. I think the point is that that being a, a relatively simpler thing, we solve that by getting the maintainers active. Like that level of thing, I think, was solved. It took a lot of cajoling, and, I, and it took the revival to get it there. So I'm just I'm going to acknowledge some amount of value in what happened, um, but I think there's another level of complexity of things that we haven't solved yet. Yeah, I think the the uh, the amount of work it took to get approval for that relatively minor thing makes me think that anything bigger than that is effectively impossible, whether that's an image spec or any other thing. Like if, if this is if this is how OCI operates, then I don't see another change on the horizon to to OCI broadly and that is ultimately long term not good for the health of the community and the health of the project that we are all trying to you know <laughs> breathe life into. Um, mm -hmm. I just wanted to. I, I only have a few more minutes before I have to leave, but I, I really wanted to advocate for more folks to, well, get. I wanted to get feedback and see if people think this is working correctly, uh, and if not, like me, help a, help advocate for moving in the right direction and trying to get more maintainers somehow. Yeah. I don't know, Phil, to your point, like, do you, is there a, would you, what do you think about just approving the, like, I know that it's out of the standard operating procedures for those two open maintainer uh, PRs, but they won't get approved if the absent maintainers are taken into account. There is no quorum without the absent maintainers and they are absent by definition. So log jam. Yeah, I guess on, on that point, I, I didn't have time before today's meeting, but like, you know, Chris and Amy kind of did this, you know, quick assessment of activity. And we, we I think we looked it over months ago. Um, you know, like Vincent said, this is a tricky area where like, you know, we, we have processes in place to like, Say, hey, you know, you were part of this group, but if you're not going to be active, like let us know what you want to do. Do you want to be archived, emeritus, whatever? And it seemed like we got one or two responses to that in the moment, like, hey, you know, I had the wrong email address, but I'm still interested. Uh, but yeah, yeah, you know, it, there... it feels like we're at the point where it's time to revisit, like, okay, but did was there actual activity that came out of that? And maybe yeah. that maybe that if you one. if you if you knock on a door and say is anyone there and nobody answers you can't just wait indefinitely right like you have to at some point assume that means they're not there uh yeah. i feel like the the calls for stepping down of inactive maintainers the, if the response to it is no response then uh that seems like signal that they are absent i don't know yeah uh, but i you obviously have other considerations and other concerns and other things, but as an outside observer, a new co con community contributor, this seems weird to me, and I wanted to raise that. To, to me, I almost would say clo close them because I've sat there and they're stale. And then um, the, yeah, kind of pursue the, 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 the removing, removing other inactive folks, like you're saying, just so the quorum stays intact um but 
Okay, I'm. I, that could, I, that could no, be, that could, I, I realize that that could be signaling in various ways, and it's not meant to be. I, I have no no prescribed. Quorum. Yeah, I, I have no prescribed solution to this. I mostly just wanted to advocate for people's thoughts and uh, to see if anyone felt the way I feel or felt the opposite. And sure, I don't know sure. either way. Uh, but I feel like I have, those the three the three open issues related to this are somewhat hairballs, and nobody wants to touch them. Uh, Plenty of them are approved by nearly enough people if we if we sure. uh, ignore the inactive maintainers. <laughs> Fair. You also there's, there's quite a lot of approval. Raised. For, sorry? Do you also have to ignore the issues that were raised as a result? So it's, which, I'm not I'm actually I'm making an assumption about which ones you're referring to. So I, I think I'm talking about Tyco and V Rothberg. I'm sorry. The, the open PRs for Tyco and Tyco and uh, B Rothberg are basically approved if you ignore oh, the people PRs who have not responded since January. So that's the ones I'm, uh, uh, I gotta run though, uh, but I will watch the recording and see if anybody says anything about me while I'm gone. <laughs> uh, bye everyone. Thank you. Thank I was you, just add, I the way I meant by the issues by the PRs, I thought we were talking about different PRs, not nominations for people. So there, yeah. there yeah. are no oh, yeah. issues with the nominations. Yeah. Good. I um, apologize here. I did not actually see a maintainer like ladder in the TOB or anything like that. Am I missing something? I didn't quite hear the question. Are you talking about the uh, if, topic, Misha? Yeah, it, oh, was the topic still uh, the ma maintainers and getting new maintainers and... Uh, For image spec, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'd be happy to be an image spec maintainer, except um, I haven't contributed anything to the image spec. So... <laughs> Um, I was wondering if there was like a maintainer ladder thingy that uh, the governing body has in place. Oh, uh, you're, say you're saying like a, the route or like what, what gets somebody to maintainership? Yep. Yeah, uh, that, that is, um, a loose definition usually people just either refer to like folks involvement uh or leading various technical discussions or um you know arriving at you know prs or whatever it is it's, it comes in different ways just because it's usually not always just pr based um uh, i would i would say that if, if you want this project to be open and like others to feel like you know, they can join, then there should be that laid out somewhere, even if there is multiple paths to become a maintainer, having those written down. Um, mm. Otherwise, it just feels like, you know, you kind of have to be an insider and know inside people to be a maintainer. Um, I think fair. that's pretty common in others. Which is not, which is not the goal. <laughs> so. Yeah, but that, that's just what it looks like if there's, if it's not written down, because how would anybody know if it's not written down, so. I think the written down process is that an existing maintainer may propose a motion to add you as a maintainer, uh, which right. isn't a guideline for future maintainers. It's just how that is decided. And so I agree with you. Yeah, I think, I mean, a lot of the maintainer files that I've seen in like paths to being a maintainer, that's all it says is that you get nominated by the maintainer. There's a two thirds vote on existing maintainers and it's, you know, the criteria for why that person might nominate you can vary, but having at least some formal process, I think, is. And outside of that, they're, they're at the initial state, right? The initial creation of the list. There's a you know a process. Okay, do we want to create this? You have to go to the top, and there's nominations, and and that sort of thing happens. And sometimes it's based on where did the code come from, kind of thing, right? Um, so yeah, yeah, coming in at the end and, and we're waiting on a reset for a list of maintainers. It's sort of like, well, how does it happen now if, if, we, if we're a little short on the head count to get over the two thirds majority, it can be tricky. 
Um, and th this isn't the only open source project that has this issue. It happens a lot in open source projects. One after they deliver something and move on, you know, it, it, you, you really, you almost need to tie it down at the end to, to say people, you know, please leave now if you're not going to stay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and thank you very even, much. Right? That could even be written like, you know, six months of inactivity, you know, removes you as a, you know, a year of inactivity, whatever you want it to be. I think that's reasonable. I would have removed everybody from this project at one point. <laughs> <laughs> that's not true <laughs> I, I, I agree with i agree with your, your point though and, and i and like as you're describing this i i feel like we wrote this down and i'm like looking through the runtime spec right now um but it regardless then it should be codified there's but um good good point but I think there's I, I, the tension in the room is that the elephant in the room, whatever the tension. We know this is a problem. We're trying to make some progress. I don't know if we found the answer yet. I think there was a desperate hope that uh, the offsite next week was going to be in person and we were going to be able to make more progress. I think last week. And, check, and, there was four and to my FOMO's, to my FOMO's demise, it sounds like there will be people in person. So. I think I also we're all in Seattle. <laughs> well, actually, no. I think Josh is traveling through his uh, heart grass there to make it, but I think everybody else is actually in Seattle. So, um, I, my point is, like, I, I think we recognize the problem. I don't know if we know what the answer is yet. As far as the uh, offsite uh, event next week, and maybe Amy was going to talk about that. How is what's the plan for? Discussion between in person and virtual. Oh, how do you do the hallway conversation replacement? Is that kind of weird? No, like how do you how do you have a discussion when half the people are there in person and then half the people are there virtually? You have the discussion and you are respectful and gentle to everyone. That's as best as I can do. <laughs> oh no, I mean like more like just logistically. It's gonna be just one big Zoom thing. On there's the there's gonna be one big Zoom. It's gonna be on this Zoom. Um. Uh, I, I need Are we having sure. like decent speakers at all? I don't know about any of that, but the team on site mm -hmm. does know that we do are, are doing like a combination between virtual and um, the folks in the room as well. Um, so the logistics are going to be what they are, but we at least know where we're going to be. Yeah, Rose, is so, your question, will there be a, like, I, I think it was going to be, at least my, my guess was, it was just going to be a, no, a conference like this, except there'll be a bunch of people that are in a room and to your point, we probably, to I think what Amy's saying is instead of us all wearing a headset and being able to talk to each other, you know, is that there'd be some speakers in the rooms or a speakerphone of some sort that we could, you know, and the problem is, is like, it's not even half. There's, I think, was it four or five, Amy, that you said that there's going to be there in person? Oh, um, there's going to be more than that. Um, uh, I just put like in the document, like who all were like, I'm, I'm designating as like on-site leads. I got you. I got you. Yes. Okay. Um, that inherently, the, yeah, there is some people that are on site that will have a chance to talk to each other one on one, and it'd be great if there was a way to do that virtual. But I think even in the sessions that and that was part of my comment around the allocations for time is if we're trying to cover three meaty topics in ninety minutes, then we're not really having much of a conversation. Like the idea is, you know, some amount of here's here's a, a problem space, five ten minutes, whatever it is, and then like. 40% of the time is active discussion on that topic, uh, whatever, that, whatever that chunk of time is. Um, and it would be virtual and you know, local. I don't know what else to do in this kind of situation. I, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if this helps, if, if the question is more practical or pragmatic. Like, I think those of us who are trying to organize discussions, like we just need to have a framework whereby like, one of us is totally dedicated to making sure that anyone who's on Zoom is able to interject, ask a question, uh, you know, so that, like there's someone in the room who's being that intermediary to make sure that we include a, and have, you know, all the participation, whether you're there or not there. Just messing with the reactions as a way to like, yeah, like we need to have a formal of 
raise hands, make sure the a moderate, whatever moderator to make sure that the conversations are being balanced. And if actually, I, if we're doing whiteboards, are we going to have a camera so that others can see the whiteboard? I mean, uh, one of us could bring a webcam and point it at a whiteboard. We've done that. There you go. Yeah, not, or not uncommonly that we've had like more than one laptop that are all on mute and whatever, so that people can have perspective yeah. or choose perspective and only hear one thing, so we don't get the feedback loop. That's oh, like kind of a round table of laptops. Yeah, I like it. That's how we've done it in the past. So there's some governance stuff that's in runtime spec that really ought to live in OCI in the, the org repo. But it doesn't. What happen. about Michael? Huh? I was wondering if you were talking about the part about Michael. Oh, I'd have to look. Mr. OCI. Crosby, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. But still, it doesn't have a particular ladder of like what are the criteria of becoming. So that's good. Sorry, my brain's still back there. Okay, let's let's move on. What's the next? Uh, okay, I think I'm the next. Um, so the a couple of weeks ago i brought up the um and i don't know if folks have the link from meeting agenda but um a proposal to the pearl spec to add oci artifact as a package type um and the idea is that um we can't currently there's a docker package type and we can't remove this because of backwards compatibility but the goal is to move it towards um deprecation just in the by way of people not using it and instead having an alternative to use. Um, the general goal here is to have a reference to, um, or a package type for um, artifacts that can be stored in OCI registries. Um, and I opened the proposal. There was some, I think I wanted to discuss mostly the, uh, there's some objection to OCI artifact as a name. Um, and I think, um, John, if you're there, uh, maybe you can start with what you see as objections there. To me, it seems like OCI artifact is a general way to reference artifacts stored in OCI registries. I think most Perl users, we can't, aren't going to be, um, you know, wildly familiar with the intricacies of the OCI image spec and distribution spec. Um, and the goal is to have some sort of URI um, that references content addressable artifacts. Yeah, um, I think it is confusing and I, uh, maybe that's partially my fault. Um, so artifacts means a couple things. Um, there is the open containers artifacts project that was proposed and approved and exists as a repo. There's also the term artifacts, which generically means things, yeah. right? Um, so when, when I think we were just talking past each other a couple of weeks ago, when I thought you were talking about artifacts generically, but there is language in the spec that is about the artifacts project specifically. Um, more confusing is that the proposal is about the thing you thought artifacts project was. So the proposal is to basically refactor the open containers project in terms of the artifacts project. Uh, but that is not what has happened. And so artifacts means a different thing from anything stored in a registry. Uh, and I, I think it is confusing to use the term OCI artifacts to refer to anything stored in a registry, especially if there is language in the spec that is specific to the artifacts project. And I realized I just said a lot of words. And so uh, well, uh, please ask it's questions. It's also not OCI artifacts. And artifacts project has an S. Like OCI artifact is just a thing that um, you know follows the OCI specification. Sure, I, so I, this is I would to say, the sorry. Um, I was confused. I, so it, it's not just the string. It is also the content where like, if you're referring to the thing 
that the artifacts project calls an artifact type that is specific to the artifacts project and it is not generically OCI. OCI generically, you would talk in terms of digest descriptors, media types. Um, the artifact type is not a generic OCI concept. Well, type is the media type. It's not. Uh, the, it, it, the language in the PR is about what the artifacts project calls artifact type, which is defined as the config descriptors media type. Uh, Multi-platform images, like the image index spec, does not have a config descriptor. And so there's no way to reference an um, image index's artifact type because there is not one. The media type is the, say, envelope of that artifact. So with the media type of an image is this image media type. The media type of an index is the index media type. The artifact type is an image's configs descriptors media type, which is a separate thing. So uh, let me just uh, quickly clear the air over here. What we're looking for, what Perl the uh, spec is looking for is a package type. And um, what the Perl community is asking is for something, a word that indicates a thing that is stored in a container registry container registries as they exist right now, conforming to the OCI distribution spec? I would I would put forth again the string OCI in the same way that like the string for NPM is not NPM package. There's not like Python package or whatever. It's just. Yeah, the... it's a semantic word. So it's more right. because NPM stores NPMs. Like what we're saying is that a registry can store lots of different things. And all of the details of what you just went through are technically accurate, but abstract of the point of we're just trying to describe how things can get stored in a registry. And there's lots of things that can be stored in there. So I'm not sure why there's such a hesitancy to something that is very generic around. This is not an org that we're talking about. OCI is an org. There's lots of things. I, I think it's just because the word artifact and artifacts has gotten overloaded in all those conversations. Has it? It is an I just, overloaded. I don't know if it yeah, has. It, That's my point. No, I think it has. If you ask, it, it's it's it, built connotations around it in, in the OCR world. I think we internally get ourselves so wrapped up in the semantics of this that the external is just like, can you guys just figure it out? Like, how do we refer to these things that get stored in the registry? And, and why is it that there's so much contention on this? The people just refer to it as OCI, I think is the point. Could you say, and I, cool. I, uh, either way, it doesn't matter in the context of this of this pearl thing. Um, mm -hmm. If we say OCI, which are, or if we say OCI dash artifacts, which are, it's, it you, you could limit it either way. If you if you want if you want those things just to be the images that we're currently storing with the currently defined you know uh, manifest, that's perfectly fine. Um, and if later on we want to add to that list, it's also perfectly fine. It doesn't matter really the name we put there. It can, yeah. Like uh, like John said, it could be it could be OCI dash stuff or objects or something even more you know generic. It doesn't really matter what that name is too much, as long as it's got the prefix OCI. Why would we name something good. that we already have a name for? Like the distribution spec was even updated to make sure that we referred to these things generically. Well, it's just. We right. just, then, to be specific, if you look in the spec, we don't define OCI dash artifacts. We define yeah, artifact, right? But we don't we don't define what what that prefix means in front of it. So there is a little bit of a contention there with naming issues, but uh, I wouldn't worry about it too much. What matters is what we say it means. I just think we're being way too literal. We're getting way, we're letting the details get in the way of sending a clear message. You can store lots of things in a registry. It, this isn't just NPMs. And this is similar to the other conversation we had around the maintainership is not just as simple as active maintainers. This conversation, this debate we have around artifacts and registries has caused so much confusion. Like the Helm team is still confused around whether we actually, is this thing's real or not? And John, you said a couple of weeks ago, who do I, you know, why is this a confusion? What do you need to do to solve it? 
we need to stop being confusing around the message that you can store lots of things in a registry and we call that, we are referring to that as artifacts. You can store lots of things. An image is one of those artifacts. And the fact that we keep on expressing- That's, that's not true though, Steve. That it's confusing the, anybody that wants to be able to use this and grow the distribution to do other things. That's, that is misleading though. Like it, artifacts, the, the, the project, the OCI artifacts repo doesn't incorporate multi-platform images into it in any way. It has a to-do. Each one of those images are still a artifact. The fact that you can have a collection of multi-platform images, which themselves are, they're still an, an image, a container image artifact. The fact that you can pivot on it doesn't make that a new type. It just means that you have an index that looks across them. This isn't so literal to talk about the actual well, media. You, it's a conceptual. You guys are both right. <laughs> you really are. You're, you're both right. And it's okay that you're both right. Right. It, 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 it's cool. Um, I think what some to think about is that the OCI image specification does not restrict, right, registries, and nor does the distribution specification restrict registries from storing other media types. Now, that said, it doesn't mean that those other media types have been specified in OCI, and I think that's what John needs. So we, I think the, the key thing is your, it doesn't matter really what we, we could call it O stuff. We, it, whatever we use as a name, we have to say why we use that name and, and what does it mean to include, right? And it, it, but whether we use, you know, artifacts or OCI or OCI dash artifacts, it really doesn't matter that much. As long as we could say open containers initiative, if they would allow us to, to use a longer name, right? So I, mean, uh, I think if you I, look at these, there, there's this is the lack of clarity. I mean, if you look at why do we call it OCI artifacts as a repo and a project, was because it was the way that we were re going to represent things that are generically stored in a registry. But that, that didn't happen. A long discussion it hasn't happened. That yet. never it's happened. happened. It hasn't happened. It, it doesn't yet. seem like it's going to happen, right? In the proposal, it says that we would update the OCI image spec to reference things in terms of generically artifacts, but. In this so, current form, the artifacts project can't do that because it's specific I'm, to the image, not the index. Sorry, Nisha. Yeah, I'm so I'm sorry to butt in here. I I want to just make it really clear that uh, Perl itself is a very loose kind of specification. Uh, quite frankly, the Perl community doesn't care what you call this thing, as long as you can use it to. Um, reliably locate the artifact. That's all they care about. So with, for example, with package managers, having a package type called NPM means that there are some rules associated with it. Um, the way that I think about this is there are some high level rules uh, around uh, building and distributing container images that falls under OCI. There are some sub rules around that, but the overarching rule is OCI. So my suggestion would be to use OCI for now so that we can refer to any like artifacts that we as a community are talking about um, when we're creating pearls. Um, and we can have like subtypes from there on because this is a distributed environment. Um, anything can happen in the future. I mean, for for one thing, there is already something called Docker in the in the spec that only has to do with you know that. Uh, the Perl's community's understanding of what Docker is, not what OCI's understanding of what Docker is. So it, it's kind of like a vague thing anyway. I guess, sorry, I dropped off for a second. So sorry, John, if you already said this. I, can you just, uh, especially because I'm kind of noob compared to all of you guys, um, what, so what I guess, so you see artifacts Act as the issue, if we change the name to OCI, then does it then not become a problem? I mean, I no, um, it, it's not just the name; it's the semantics being proposed. Um, so, 
there is a difference between a media type and an artifact type. And we're so mixing. Then in your eyes, do you have, would we, in your eyes, do you see that there needs to be OCI image and OCI artifact as a pearl type? Because that feels. Uh, I don't think so. I, I'd be then fine. How do we with, represent both in, in your eyes? I would just call it OCI. And, and it, so it depends on how deep in the graph of objects you're talking. Like OP OCI artifacts, the project, puts a string inside the image that represents an artifact type, right? You have to pull that thing and then pull the artifact type out of it. So in the current PR, there's some discussion around what type means. And if I'm correct me if I misunderstood this, but we want to put that artifact type as this optional type field, right? The, the problem is that that's specific to one of the two types of images that you can reference in a, in a registry. There's an image and an index. Artifact type only makes sense in the context of an image. If you want to be able to use Perl to reference multi-platform images, like all of Docker library images, you, you can't use the concept of an artifact type. It has to be the media type, which is the content type of the outer JSON object. So the, the OCI image or the OCI index. That, that's the more general thing. If using the image to store arbitrary things is an application of OCI called artifacts, so, but it's not the more general thing. But if we don't have type, then the Perl is kind of useless as a URI, right? The whole point is to identify this thing and give context to what it is. So I'm not sure without a type how we give Hints I'm fine as with that. What this thing is, if it, right. we don't so I would concede that it may make sense to have both. Like everything has a media type, the outer envelope type. Everything has that. Artifacts specifically have an artifact type. And if that is an optional thing for the Perl, whatever, that makes sense to me, right? You can't rely on an artifact type existing if you're able to reference anything in a registry. But so, you can rely on the media type. So have, OK, well, type is optional. So and you can add as many of these optional qualifiers as you want. So you think that having media type and artifact type as optional qualifiers would better encompass like all of artifacts that can be stored in OCI registry? Is that? Yeah, I, mean, I, I'm I really trying to come to a like, where can we meet in the middle on? Because right. this is useful for applications of just creating S bombs. And like, my primary motivation is with SPX, like, how do we reference images in an SPX document? Um, so, yeah, yeah. And, but, and like, I don't like arguing semantics for fun. Like, I think this is important. Like, if it's a, in a specification, it's important that it means something specific. So, like, I don't love putting artifact type, but I'll accept it if it's an optional thing that that is maybe there. Um, it is optional. I, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I wouldn't call it type because that implies to me that it's this generic thing. I, like I am still confused about what string you want to put there, and that shouldn't like a spec shouldn't be that ambiguous. It should either be the content type of the envelope or the like wrapped media type sometimes. I think this is the point why we were using the OCI artifacts project to be able to reference this because what we, the agreement we wound up with is the image container image runtime type, whether it's represented as a manifest or index, manifest or index is a detail that is really a matter of multi-platform routing of the same thing. It just says, this is a container image. There's a pivot, there's a detail that does it, in fact, there's a separate property for architecture in Perl that says whether it's Linux or Windows. So anything that's an index or an image can still be referenced as a container image. What we're trying to say is, what is, is it a container image? Is it a Helm chart? Is it a WASM? Is it a, uh, you know, an OPA? Is it something we haven't even identified yet? Because that's the whole point of the flexibility is that you shouldn't have to come to this body to define a new type. 
I think part of what we're getting caught up into is yes, there's these media types that we can historically use. When I say historic, I'm not trying to say, what I'm trying to say is at the time, it was only container images. We've been trying to figure out how do we leverage what's there. So yes, we use the media type of the config object to pivot for different types. The concept is not tied to the media type of the manifest, it's tied to the, the artifact type of what it is you're trying to represent. A container image is an artifact type. An OPA is an artifact type. A WASM, well, I'm trying to get into this WASM conversation. So let's just, I'll use something else for this Helm chart. Um, those are what we're logically calling artifact types. And if you look at what we've been trying to do with the re most recent stuff with artifacts is not try to reinvent yet another type. In fact, this was your feedback that we already in artifacts, in the artifact or OCI artifacts, we said, use the IANA media types to uniquely identify something and stick that on the config object. Rather than trying to redefine a different way to do artifact type, now that we're first classing that property, let's just use the same thing. So that's the, it, it's, it's bubbling up to the most simplistic thing of what is it we're trying to represent for people to tell them? And that's store stuff in a registry, store all your stuff in a registry for all we care. It's great. Don't reinvent all this stuff. How do I know what it is that's being stored in a registry? There's a type. We've been calling it artifact type because that seemed like, you know, it was a, it is the terminology we've been using. Um, it happens to be represented as a media type on the image spec. And then we're surfacing up as a first class property in the artifact spec. All of which is completely legit for the distribution spec. The distribution spec doesn't say it has to be a manifest that's defined in these repos. I guess, John, what do you see as um, the issue with, because um, you said you're not, like we're not arguing semantics just because like this is the distinction is important. In the way that Perl would be used, what is the, um, I guess, consequence of using media type or artifact type as the type of the, in, in, as a descriptor in the Perl? Where does that lead people astray in identifying it, in, you know, identifying this unique artifact? Primarily that you you can't reference an image index in this way. So multi-platform images are not addressable like that. So I leaving out the... I think it's if important. Think, but from a pro perspective, I'm just asking, why does that matter? I don't know. I asked about this last uh, two weeks ago for links to the SVDX stuff. I don't really understand how it's being used. It's just it's, saying, I, what is a tag? If you have, because the way we identify things in a registry is a tag or a digest, right? So if I have a thing in an, so an SBOM is generated to point to a thing. Container images, probably a lot of them, but there'll be other things that you'll be able to build SBOMs for. When I'm uniquely identifying that thing, by the way, what type is it? Is it a container image or is it a Helm chart? If it's a container image, and it's then that's the important thing because it basically says, okay, this is a runtime image. The fact that it's a multi-arc image is somewhat irrelevant to the fact that I'm pointing at something, it's a container image. If it is important to specify whether it's Linux or Windows or, you know, there is another field that, that Rose put in that Rose is leveraged because it was already defined there for architecture. So you can still spend, you can still get the details of what you're trying to say from an index in the fact that it's multi multi architecture. I can also give an example in terms of SP, like how you would practically, where this would practically show up, like where people would be using it. So imagine you have two companies, they are producing an SBOM for the same container image. And while the naming or like the SPDX ID of that um, container image, the same container image is going to be, uh, different because maybe they have different naming conventions or whatever the uri which is this pearl is the goal is that if somebody was looking at these two separate documents created by different producers then they could look at the same they could look at this uri and say okay that is the same that's the same thing 
Um, and it's not going to be a hundred percent, like it's not going to be identical, but the goal is to get it. This pearl is supposed to help us get as close as possible to recognizing that these two things are the same in separate documents. That's like the most straightforward use case for where it would actually be applied. In that case, I don't know why you need the type at all. It sh isn't the digest sufficient for that? Yeah. And you don't have to do the type, like all of that the all of those optional qualifiers are just hints they're not actually used when comparing the um equalness i don't think that's the word but whether when they're comparing if these objects are the same they don't use those optional qualifiers they're just hints that humans can use or whatever intelligent tools can use to try to deduce that these are the same thing sure um do, do you expect that tools will use a pearl to try to like actually pull a thing and look at it and use it and parse it um, I don't have any tools that do that. Maybe tools in the future might try to do that, but um, so I, think... I will say that Cyclone DX actually does use Perl to do uh, URL triangulation. Um, and they specifically use that for container images as well. So yes. but do they use a repository URL for that? Um, yeah, at this time, they are using the Docker, uh, the Docker strings that are in the Perl spec right now. Um, but that is assuming that, you know, Docker is the, Docker is the tool used to uh, distribute container images or mess with uh, container images. But that's the whole purpose of the Perl in the first place is to have some human readable way of understanding the sem semantics rather than the syntax. So that's why there is this whole like, you know, oh, but what kind of thing are you storing in the container registry? It's, a dif it's the difference between something that a human can understand and something that a tool can uh, kind of triangulate and get the accurate information. Does that make sense, John? Yeah, in that case, I think it is important to have the outer media type. Um, like if a tool is going to try to interact with this thing, it needs to know the type of that thing. So it, there's an important difference between an image index and, a, and an image. And like image indexes aren't only used for multi-platform images. You may use it to distribute a collection of images, which is, I think, a separate thing wholly from like a single artifact. Right? Yeah, I, I, like... I agree. Like image, you can't really identify an index with the digest, right? Well, you can. Oh, it's it's the you, yeah, you can absolutely. That's that's the crux of me yelling about semantics is that you can. But we're not actually saying these properties are used by code that actually does it. The only thing that really matters from a code perspective when it tries to find it is the digest. Like, and that's where we're putting in the version property. Everything else is helpful information to troubleshoot. You know, there, the fact that it says artifact type that helps you know it's a Helm chart or a, a container image, that's, there's no code that's going to directly parse that. It's literally how do we convey what this pointer is pointing to in a human readable way that doesn't have to rename um, names that have already been created. You're saying they're only going to pull blobs? Not blobs, they're pulling the manifest blobs, digest. Reference they use by the shot. digest. OK, so, so in those much. manifests will be OCI and other types. What we're saying is the way you, the way you identify things in a registry, and again, we're using things because for some reason artifacts is not a, a way to thing we can use. The way we store artifacts in a registry is uniquely identified by a tag, which is mutable, or a digest, which is immutable. So we're saying if, if an SPDX or, or an SBOM, because I don't want to get into saying SPDX and Cyclone DX every time. If I have an SBOM, you want to make sure it's uniquely talking about one and only one thing. doesn't matter what registry it's in. And that's a different part. It's how do I say this thing absolutely points to this one and only one thing. That today is the digest, the digest of the manifest. And then through the manifest, it goes and finds the blobs and does all the detail. Whether it's the repo name, whether it's the, um, 
uh, what else with the architecture, the registry URL, all of those things are additional pieces of information that are like diagnostics, troubleshooting, helpful information. So I guess the question I was gonna throw out there is how are these pearls generated and then how are they used? And specifically on the type fields, I think that's the one we've been churning on is it, I'm assuming there's probably gonna be some automatic generation code in there. Does it look and say, what is this thing? Is it an image? Is it an abstract so. artifact and then go down? How, how does that work? How they're generated will depend on the tool generating the SVOM. So they may be, I mean, but th that also doesn't mean that a human might not be generating this Perl. But the way, I mean, I see Perls being generated with the tooling of however you're creating your SVOM. Yeah, I guess I'm trying to dig into understanding some of the questions that John had, but which was, you know, if you're just looking at the media type, then that's what we know we're looking at. If it's like a media type plus the artifact type, then that's what we're looking at. So I'm just can't yeah, understand. And then also, yeah. what are we using the field for? What, what's, what's the downstream use case of that when it has that? What does the media type mean? Because today to, you know, what's actually deployed in registries today versus what we're trying to get deployed for tomorrow, which by the way, what we're building today is, is for a year from now or, or more, is image manifest and image index. We use that, if, if that's all we use, then how do we know whether this is a Helm chart or a container image? Like that's, that's the point of using these generically referred to as artifact type, which today gets persisted as the config, manifest config media type. And then the idea of, to your point of when it gets generated, if somebody is automatically generating an SBOM and they know they're generating an SBOM for a container image or a Helm chart, then what should they stick in there? Should they reinvent a new thing or should they just so you're use saying the media type or the artifact type prop value that we've been saying, go register this with Diana because this is how you claim your type. I think we're splitting, a, I feel like we're splitting a hair here to create ambiguity of something that's there. There, Like what is media type is the, effectively the mime type of the thing that you just pushed. Yeah, except they're, I think they're taking an extra step farther and they're looking at not just at the media type at the top level, but also the artifact type. If you have something, you know, going forward when we're pushing artifacts, the Aura's artifacts, I think Steve's working on. I think that's what we're looking at. Well, even today, if you push a Helm chart or a, if you push a Helm chart or an OPA policy, the media type, to your point, it, it, well, I'm not sure which media type we're talking about. We're talking about the media type of the manifest because those are all OCI image. What so we've, now we're talking we've, media type of the configs? Well, but I'm, what I'm actually saying is the fact that we stuck it on the config was the best thing we could do two years ago to get agreement. That was an annotation would have been better. I, I, okay. I, to, because not, then we wouldn't have having this conversation. We landed this where it was. Yeah, and, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I guess, it, it, guess where I'm we going also is do, if there, you still have to this reference, Steve, in the, uh, in the manifest? I can't remember. I'm sorry. Say that again. Do you still have your this like reference where the manifest itself defines what its own type is? We don't we don't have that in the in the in the, in the artifacts. In no, that, that was that was recently removed. It was recently removed. Okay, thanks. Yeah. I, I couldn't I remember. Oh, we're talking about the media type in the artifact spec. Yeah, that's. I mean, the properties, not the property, the concept still exists, but it's it's the schema of the manifest, and we did remove it from the content okay. of the manifest. Okay. Yeah. What would be useful for me is if there was just like, even like an if then else, if the media type is this, you know, if the, if the other type is that, this is the value that's going to be over in the type field and just kind of work through that tree and say, this is how that logic works. And that might do, do, an, do an any parse. And if you see this extra field, yep, it's an artifact, right? Yeah. I mean, if, if we work through that logic, then I think, yeah. you know, just documenting it down. It doesn't even need to be in the spec or anything, but just throw in a comment, throw it somewhere that we can look at and just kind of go back and forth and say, okay, this makes sense for how we look up the type. And it may come out saying after all that, that maybe there was a better way to have put this field in there, maybe not. Okay, so I don't think we're going to resolve this today. I do want to figure out how we're going to decide 
what we're going to do moving forward. Like, is there, do we want to take, uh, a, I don't know how consensus works here, but eventually we're going to have to make a decision about how we want to do this if we want any sort of movement in the Pearl spec. So um, I don't know. So it seems, I think, John, if I'm understanding your wants with the changes, you want to get rid of OCI artifact and you want to separate out the artifact type and media type or get rid of them all together. And then that would work for you or like, what do trying to understand what everybody wants and then how we can meet in the middle. Sure. I, I mean, we're at time. Uh, so I, I think the, the best possible thing is the stream becomes OCI and we don't talk about artifact type. We talk about media type. I don't think anyone's happy with that except for me. Uh, why so why does the have stream it. media type if you have the digest? I placed my hand, but I didn't, I needed to button. Why, why, what API requires media type? Uh, I, I could tell it's, you later. Yeah. I mean, from a, from a poll <laughs> perspective, as a, poll. Yeah. As, a, as a part of the poll, you're requesting that it's out of the if you the digest, is media type required anywhere? You're, you're right. If it's a blob, that's why I was asking that question. It was, are we talking about blobs or manifests? If we're talking yeah, about manifests, then there's, there's a, what we need to see some code or some test cases, I think, to, to, to really fully understand. The media, the media type has nothing to do with the code paths. This is all useful debugging information. The only thing that matters from a code path is the digest. Okay. I, I don't agree with that, uh, but I'm happy to That's argue. That's what the SVOM scenario so is. If, if Perl, but, but I think we'd also like Perl to be able to use, you know, by human readable reference, right? Not just, not just at Shaw, right? So. My, my problem is that like the Perl spec isn't specifically for S bombs, right? Like this is kind of a generic thing you're hoping to land. And so if it is generic, it needs to be generic. It can't just apply to the specific use case you have. So, I, okay, I have one other question that maybe since this isn't gonna be solved today, um, Steve and John, if we met offline and came to an agreement, is everybody else, does anybody else have strong opinions either way? about which one we use. I don't think we'd want, so I would send that out to the mailing list or something, because uh, a lot of people who would have strong opinions aren't on this call. Okay, but if we, everybody who's here today, if we met, like, is it, I guess I'm asking, does anybody else want to be on this offline call that I would like to continue so that we don't have to wait another week to get this done? I don't necessarily need to be on the offline call but i would like to see the result to be able to right yeah of course i'll send out down. the results i'm happy to send out the results and then anybody who wasn't here today can weigh in and we can do this all over again but for now just getting um getting this main point of contention resolved and then moving forward with pearl is that um so nisha john and steve is that okay if i schedule another call for us later this week I don't know how many hours we can fit in the offsite, but um, I, I don't know. I, I, I guess that's maybe the question is who else is interested in having this conversation and maybe we can use that because if it's just a oh, couple yeah. of us. Once it hits the mailing list. I, yeah, <laughs> I, think, to the mailing list. I think we all just need to keep in mind some like both sides probably are going to have to concede a little bit to we have an ideal way of how we want it done. We're going to have to meet in the middle and figure out a way to move this forward and so I mean, I think we need to prepare to concede slightly on one side or the other so that both people are not perfectly happy, but a little bit happy. Um, so does that seem like- I'm never going to be happy, don't worry. I do? <laughs> okay. I, I won't be happy even well, if I get my way, so it's fine. Okay, well. <laughs> hey, thanks, Sarah. Like, like, uh, that was my question. Sarah posted a, an answer. Oh, oh Sajay, I mean, is that right? Oh, Sajay. I thought, I thought it was Sir. I'm sorry. Sorry, Sajay. <laughs> I thought I saw Sarah was here earlier. All right. I think there are also some misconceptions of what Pearl is and what it's meant to do. So we can, we can like resolve that offline and then send, send whatever we come up with to the mailing list. But yeah, 
Uh, 100% Rose, thank you for mediating this. Okay, CJ, so this, this maps to the poll through some other process. Thanks. All right. Okay. Um, Steve and John and Nisha, can you just stand so we can try to figure out a date that I can send it? Sorry, just one more minute of your time and then. All right. Sure, I'll stay back. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Great. Thanks, everybody. Bye bye. Just because um, we have this time blocked, and next week, I think Amy was suggesting we don't do the meeting next week because of the summit the next day. Do we just want to use this same time slot for next week for this conversation? Does that work, John? Yeah, I have this time slot next week. That would work. I mean, I'd hate to lose a week to have, you know, have this, but... with a uh, kid pickup. Sorry, say that again, Rose. Oh, Nisha usually has to pick up kiddo from school right now, so I just want to make sure that it works for her next week. Yeah, I'll figure it out. Don't worry. Okay. Okay, well then I'll just see you guys next week. Thanks, Thanks Rose. Okay. Thanks, Rose. Bye. 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 Bye all. Bye. Bye all.